Weird shape. For a present. Oh! Oh, look! Gina Tate bubble bath with a Santa's hat! Thank you! I needed that! What I know about my mother is that she was that person that exudes compassion. She was always that person in the room that was watching over people and was always there for her family and made her family first. And quite frankly, um, that's one of the most important things that we've tried to bring to Judy's house. I think that the families that come here really feel the compassion of this place and it really starts with who my mother was. My memories of her uh, unfortunately are not as many as I would like. She was diagnosed with breast cancer when I was seven and went through you know, the chemotherapy and radiation and was sick for a number of, uh, of months going through that process. And then ultimately went into remission for four and a half years. And then she got sick again, the cancer came back and it was six months from the time where we found out that it had come back till she ultimately died. After I lost my mother, I didn't know any other kids that were going through something similar to what I went through. The result was I felt different, and because I felt different and nobody could really identify with what I was going through, I didn't talk to anybody about it. So if I had had a place like Judy's house, I would have felt like I wasn't the only 12-year-old boy in the world that just lost his mother. And I really believe that I could have avoided a lot of the anger and negative uh, energy that came out uh, and if I would have had that healthy outlet. I think it was my sophomore year in, in college, I attended a leadership uh, seminar. And I, that was the first time that I had gone from the mindset of being a victim uh, to being a grieving individual uh, to being challenged by that that conference to, to put your life experiences uh, into action in a positive way and to start thinking about how you can put the steps in place to accomplish that. Had no idea what that would look like, you know, as a sophomore in college. But then I fast forward and, and, and get drafted into the National Football League and all of a sudden the first thing that came into my, my head when I came to Denver was what a great platform to accelerate these thoughts of, of channeling this energy in a positive way forward. And then uh, I met Brooke, my wife. I grew up in a small town in Michigan, Ithaca, Michigan, population 3,000, a very rural community uh, without very many resources. And I was the daughter of a psychiatric nurse and the director of social services, so I was very aware of children and families in our community who uh, struggled with, without having resources and services available to them when they faced challenges and adversity in, in our community. So I, I remember in fifth grade learning how to spell child psychologist and I decided I wanted to be a child psychologist so that I could help kids um, find ways to not only cope with the adversity they were facing but also thrive. Brian and I met through a mutual friend and she invited me to go to a football game. And I was a nerdy graduate student up at CU Boulder and um, knew nothing about football, cared nothing about football, um, honestly didn't even know what first and 10 meant. He had a great game and, and um, afterwards um, was introduced to him. And I think the first thing that struck me was the warmth that was in his eyes. But I also remember noticing a sadness behind his eyes and um, that felt very um, salient to me. I'll never forget our first date because he invited me over for dinner and I remember thinking what am I going to talk about with this football player? I mean I know nothing about football and he surprised me because he he turned to me and he said if you could do anything for children what would you do? And I thought wow what a great first date question. And she said, well, you know, I would really like to open a house for children that had been uh, maltreated. And 
at the time, I was working in mental health centers and in community-based agencies that had very little resources, and I was working with traumatized children. And, and she flipped it on me. She said, well, what would you do? <laughs> and, um, and I said, well, I'd love to help children that have had a, a loved one die, help them through that process. And that was the first conversation about Judy's house. He amazed me with this incredible initiative to just get it, just get it started, to get it going. He said, well, it doesn't exist. There needs to be a place for children in our community to come where they can um, realize that they're not alone and, and get their needs met, whatever those needs are. And so he took it upon himself to pull together the right people and resources to get Judy's house started. And um, within a year, it, it, was, it was on its way to um, becoming a reality. I got involved uh, really over breakfast with Brian, uh, talking about helping uh, grieving kids. And um, uh, it was just a germ of an idea. He had a great passion. I uh, developed a very quick uh, respect and liking for Brian and came on board. It's always uh, an honor to work with somebody like uh, Brian who, who has a vision and decides to dedicate his life to achieving that vision. And uh, I got involved because I was a trustee of the Betcher Foundation and had a lot of experience working with various nonprofits, as well as I'm a lawyer. Uh, and Brian wanted some advice about how to set this up and what would be involved in getting a foundation or a nonprofit set up. The one thing that was most impressive with the vision of Judy's House was the long-term plan. It was not a one or a two or a four year plan. It literally had a life of its own where it was gonna be a 200 year old plan that was really gonna affect kids for generations to come. We called it Judy's house for a reason. It wasn't Judy's center, you know, or, or Judy's place. We wanted uh, the families that, that were looking for some support um, and specifically the kids to feel like they were coming to a friend's house because they're coming to meet other kids that are going through the same thing. And over time, they will develop very strong friendships. And so we didn't want uh, an environment that was sterile in any way, shape, or form, that was clin a clinical setting. We wanted it to feel safe and comfortable. Um, and so that's why we specifically chose a house and one that is very old, <laughs> over 110 years old, and every inch of the house uh, has a purpose. All the way from when you walk in the door, the smell of food cooking and cookies and, and books and toys and a number of different ways for kids to express how they were feeling. And I can't tell you how, how good it makes me feel um, to see those kids that come here for the first time that are anxious or uh, apprehensive about what is this new place, you know? I, and, and when they come here, you can just see that anxiety melt away. It's been about four and a half years since my mom passed away. And um, when that happened, it, there's nothing really more that'll rattle you to your core, um, especially with a mom like mine that was a huge part of all of our lives. She supported us in everything that we did, anything we wanted to do, she would be there for us 100%. She was class mom when we were kids. She helped out in the middle school, you know, helped out at dances. She's on the after prom committee. So it was really hard when like everything happened. It was like around Thanksgiving and she just wasn't feeling good at all. Like she just wasn't herself. On the 15th of December, uh, had some tests and on the 17th found out she had, uh, she had leukemia. They had to be aggressive with it because it was pretty, pretty far advanced and, and uh, she went in and had some chemo and uh, on January 2nd, 2009, um, she didn't come out of the chemo and she passed away. When my mom passed away, I, I had so many mixed feelings and the first one being a 14 year old boy was anger. I was thinking, why me? Why my mom? And you couldn't understand why such a thing happened and I just wanted to be by myself. I was lost for a really long time. 
I, you know, my head was just going everywhere and I made list after list after list of all the things I needed to do and I, there's no way I could keep up with everything. Of course, the most important thing at that time was to take care of the kids, so I did a, started doing a lot of research on what I could do to support the kids as we push forward. So the first day I stepped into Judy's house after my mom died, it wasn't willingly. My dad and my sisters dragged me in like I was, I threw a, a tantrum because I didn't want to come in. When I think back to the first time at Judy's house, I remember walking into this older house and just feeling like this comforting feeling, like a sense of like home kind of, in a place that I hadn't even been before. Then as it progressed a couple of weeks into the, um, as we were into the program, it was going pretty well and I guess I started to open up a little bit and I was seeing other people opening up and it just took me seeing all, everybody else open up about their feelings, talk about it and just the support that the group gave you and all the activities and everything, you learn that you can actually trust these people because they were going through something just as like, like you were. The skills that Judy Sells gave me, like being able to recognize, express, and cope with grief and then find hope and know that I can heal, that healing allowed me to grow and I've been able to push myself and do so many things since my mom died. So I would have gone to the edges of the earth to figure out what, what, what was right for my kids. Um, when I came in here and we did our, our walkthrough and, and started our sessions, I knew it was the answer. Always gonna miss Kathy, but uh, you know, this, that gave us a great foundation being here at Judy's to, to uh, push forward with our lives. Looking back at my experience at Judy's house, I, I wouldn't have changed it because of what I learned and what's like infused into my mind now and infused into my heart and so I can actually help people and I can actually understand and you learn that you don't have to go with this alone. Judy's house started because of a tragedy in my life, but that's just how Judy's house started. Judy's house has grown because people have seen the impact that it's had in our community. Our program tries to meet those kids and those parents where they are and to help them through their unique grieving process, not to put them into a cookie cutter or into a amount of time or space where they have to get through this or get over it. We don't ever use those words. Um, each process is unique and, and we respect, and that's our core value is respecting those families where they are, what they need, and how long they need uh, that process to go. As a psychologist, as a, as a therapist, I can sit with a kid one-on-one -on -one and tell them till I'm blue in the face, you're not alone, this is normal, it's understandable that you would experience this. Other kids have experienced this and feel this way as well. But they can't hear it in the way that they feel it when they sit in a room with other children like them. And they're adults, compassionate, um, amazing counselors here who can hear their stories, take it in, and help them develop the skills and um, have that knowledge and, and information that, that we've gained from thousands of children and families that have come through our doors. We've learned from them what has been difficult for them and what has been helpful for them. We all can put ourselves in, that, in those shoes, right? That we know somebody that's had an enormous tragedy. What do you say? What do you not say? And how do you support them in ways that are, that are meaningful? But for our staff, they do that every single day. And, and they do it in ways that are so compassionate, so beautiful, and so respectful. Um, but it's not easy to do. One thing that's always been consistent with the people that work at Judy's House is the hearts that they have. And I think that comes from you know, Brian and Brooke have always been able to cast the vision and to share that vision in a way that people truly grab it and know that this isn't just something that they fund, that this is their heart, their soul, um, has deep meaning to them. And every staff member who I've ever had contact with here has always had that same heart, that same caring, and has always put the children and the families that, at Judy's house first and foremost.
You know, it's just as cathartic for me to be here as I think it is for a lot of these families. You know, walking in the door, um, seeing the kids, watching them grow, you know, seeing the breakthroughs. And it doesn't happen all the time, but every now and then you'll just, you'll know that one of the kids is gonna have a breakthrough. And it could be streaming with tears, it could be streaming with laughter, but just their ability to talk about it and to actually grieve is such a powerful thing to watch. We watched it grow from its obvious infancy uh, through what we have today 10 years later and it's an amazing journey. I've worked with the, the littles for a number of years from three to five years old and their stories are amazing and they feel them with such passion. You know, it's not just I lost my mommy or my daddy died or whomever it might be. It's, you know, this is happening to me. And yet they find their little friends and they say, oh, your dad died too. It makes them feel the security ultimately that they are not alone. I've been able to take friends and family on tours of the house. What I repeatedly hear from them is, how do you do this? How do you do this work? Most of them are in tears walking through the halls, just thinking of the pain that these children must experience when they experience loss at such an early age. And for me personally, I, my response is, how could I not do this? I have learned more here at Judy's house from these families about taking trauma and difficulty and creating something wonderful out of it. Um, it doesn't mean that they leave here and suddenly all their problems are gone or everything's better. It's that they know that they have the power and the strength and the will to get through anything that comes their way in the future. We started Judy's House with passion and with helping kids and bringing them together to benefit from sharing their stories with each other. Uh, and we operated that way for a number of years. But we quickly realized that for us to help these kids in ways that were comprehensive, we had to have more understanding as to what their true needs were from an empirical standpoint. We always knew we wanted to learn from our families which services were most helpful for whom. And so we started an initiative. And what's unique about this research initiative is that it's a partnership between a community-based agency and uh, researchers from the University of Colorado at Boulder. One of the things we are really committed to uh, through our research at Judy's House is starting to give the, the empirical data and the research that shows that this is an issue. And if we don't help these kids, they are going to have negative outcomes on the, on the, on the back end. And it might not be every child, but there's a significant risk uh, with these kids that is not necessary. Our overarching goal at Judy's House is always to prevent the complications of unaddressed grief and to promote resilience and growth. Our society tends to really underestimate the profound impact of childhood bereavement, and I think it's important that we understand the urgency of this issue. The statistics are actually pretty shocking. In the United States, one out of 20 children will have a parent or sibling die before they reach the age of 18. Our research shows that contrary to what many people believe, grieving kids don't always just bounce back on their own. And time does not always heal all wounds. 78% of the kids who arrive at Judy's house are high risk for any number of emotional and behavioral problems. Those can include academic and social struggles, depression, post-traumatic stress, anxiety, drug and alcohol use, and even thoughts of suicide. But through our longitudinal research, we were able to look at youth who have had over a year pass since the death of their special person and compare those who had versus those who had not yet received services at Judy's house. Youth who had received services had about half of the emotional behavioral problems as those who had not. This is a really exciting finding about the apparent impact of our programs, cutting the number of difficulties in half for these children. It is incredibly rewarding to know that we're having that kind of an impact. We're getting to the root of the problem with some of these kids and giving them and building in them the coping skills that they can use on a daily basis to get through those tough times and, and to prevent some of those negative outcomes. And to me, there's no better place to invest than upstream and prevention with these kids. Just recently, we have 
started to expand to provide services in the community, at schools, at places like the Boys and Girls Club, so that uh, children that may not ever be able to get to Judy's house to access resources can, can get those services uh, in ways that are efficient. What we saw is we had youth with multiple needs and one of the most difficult for us to deal with is when a young person is dealing with a death loss. And we certainly are there as caring staff to listen to them, but we don't have the expertise that Judy's House was able to bring into our organization and the counseling services to not just serve the youth, but the whole family. In our school district, uh, we have 40,000 students. We have 40% English language learners, 73% poverty. So we see uh, shootings. We see uh, students who are dealing with traumatic family events. We've seen suicides. Uh, we've seen a lot of challenges that kids have to deal with. And uh, having a resource that can provide that grief outlet, the ability to not hold it up inside, to be able to share and have that opportunity to do it in a safe environment, I think is a powerful healing process that allows us to be able to use Judy's House and bring that to the forefront of families. I've watched um, the impact that um, traumatic deaths and, and having to be in the middle of it has had on my advocates. I've seen it on the officers and I know we, we carry it around, we have to process it. But I do believe that if we start addressing that as kind of a norm that we all are, we all get help with those kinds of losses and how great it feels to be able to know that there's a resource and some place to go. We've talked at length about what the future looks like for Judy's House and, and quite honestly, I talk uh, pretty much on a daily basis with our team and our board about what is our true potential as an organization. Can't we have much more of an impact around this issue and start to create the conversation about social change, about the way we think about grieving children? about what their needs are, bringing some light to that and saying these are the intervention services that are best meeting those needs. So we're, we're currently able to serve about a thousand individuals a year at Judy's House and we support the whole family, including kids ages 3 to 25 and their parents and caregivers. But unfortunately there is much more need in the community. With nearly 77,000 under the age of 25 in the Denver metro area alone suffering from the loss of a parent or sibling. Our plans to create a more comprehensive network of care will help us effectively reach these youth and families. And through expanded training and research initiatives, we hope to impact the lives of the more than 10 million bereaved youth across the United States. With technology allowing us to reach even further beyond the walls of Judy's house to achieve our vision of a world in which no one has to feel alone in grief. We've gotten to a point now, we have the largest sample of bereaved children in the United States and maybe in the world and are at a position where we can say more about what's helping these children. And to me, the only way we were going to accomplish our vision is by creating knowledge and sharing that knowledge so that other people that are passionate about this issue can help in their communities. One of the things I love most about Denver and Colorado is the, the, the type of people that are attracted here are, are by their nature entrepreneurial. I don't know why that is. I'm sure there's, you know, some way we'll, we'll get, understand at some point, but you just see it again and again. We have more startups here than just about any other city in the country. And it's not just businesses or technology, or I mean, it's, it's, it's uh, nonprofits. And I think Judy's House is a great example. We are one of the national centers for innovation in how do we deal with the problems of society? How do we address some of the ills that plague us? I, mean, I want to thank Brian I want to thank Brooke and their entire staff of professionals, counselors, um, even the University of Colorado who um, is their partner for what they're doing. We have here in Denver the preeminent organization, data-driven techniques to really help those grieving children face their darkest hour. Um, that gives me as mayor a tremendous amount of pride. I think that one of the um very tangible things that children experience when they come to Judy's house is that this is a house and a home and a safe space that was created in memory of 
a beautiful person who died too early and too young and that this is a way that Brian has honored her memory and um, created a place where her spirit shines through. And I think that what she would have wanted for her Brian would be a place like this. He's a different person now after this 10 year journey um, of developing and, and growing Judy's house and um, reaching so many families. And I know that she would be so proud of him for all that he's done and, and, and all that he will do. The honest truth is Judy's house is a part of my grieving process and honoring my mom. It's not about Brian Greasy. It's about providing a critical social service in our community that otherwise doesn't exist. It's about the families, it's about uh, the stories, and it's about making grieving children more of a priority. I couldn't be more excited about where we are after 10 years, set ourselves up in a position where we can start to execute on that and really change the way people think about this issue. And that's a powerful thing to do.